Say you know when you think of it, I belong to. It's like you know, almost like ownership, you know. But when I was listening to it, I was thinking of like belong as in I belong in the family. I mean, like just like a family has the children, you belong to that family. It's not really this, you know. It's not really so much as like an ownership type thing. You just belong. You are a part of that. Mm-hmm. And then the part where um, the life is my life is not my own. Mm-hmm. I was in my mess, man. I was doing so much, and I never thought about everybody else Amen. and any pain that I caused them. Amen. But my uncle touched. He, he told me one day. He said, "He said, son. He said, you don't know that your life is not your own." And it was like, I thought about it. Because he said, if something happened to you, you know how many people are going to be affected by what happened in your life? So it's not your own. The decisions you make and the things you do in life, it's not like those. Mm-hmm. I don't like those. Um, <laughs> and the decisions you do in life affects everybody around you more than just more than yourself really because it's really going to be on those emotionally the things you put yourself through physically it's emotionally tearing somebody up and that right there is more 
devastating than any physical pain or mental pain. Because it's harder to get over than a person just healed. And that right there it really means nothing that. about what I got going on right now. So, um, I just threw that out there. I do really say prayer thank you. Um <clears throat> okay. Yes, again, once again, we're on um, a little bit of identity. I think this might be the last thing. I, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but basically, what I was speaking on was different types of identities or different parts of identity that makes you up. Today, I'm going to speak on what comes with your identity, with what you have and who you are. Um, let's see. The scripture I have was the very first scripture that I started with when I got on identity, and it's Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Uh, everybody, please stay in this video on the scripture. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he him. And God blessed him. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth on the earth. And what I got from this, when I was reading it, that's where I came with, oh, y'all can see it. Okay, right. When I was reading it, I got a couple Distinct parts that I feel that comes with your identity. One where it says, when you saw what we're over and what we have. So there's blessings with it. The replenishing of the earth. With that, but there's access, but not ownership. What I mean by that is, it's basically everything you use, you put back, you make it back. I mean, almost like you can even look like the fruit trees, the seed. This is where you eat them and you plant them and give them back. You understand? You didn't make them, you weren't the first one who brought them. But to keep it going, that's to replenish it and subdue. I looked at that as power because in order for you to subdue something, it's going to take strength. So with your identity comes power. Dominion. Your dominion is your authority because you rule over it. And with all that comes responsibility. Because responsibility of taking all these things holding them together and using them in the right way. Uh, just to throw like, something out there, just say a policeman, right? He has the power, the authority, and the responsibility to use those in the right way. Now I want to go to another scripture, Colossians 2, 13 through 15. And basically all I'm doing tonight is just giving you what you have, what you've been given to you. 
just what comes with you being you. In Christ Jesus. Yeah, Colossians 2, 13 through 15. You were dead because of your sins, and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away, then God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. With this right here, I'm kind of, um, I was thinking about what God is saying, the spiritual vein, on how this plays into the spiritual vein. Because this is letting us know right here where what Jesus did disarmed all the spiritual rulers and authorities. So now, they really have nothing. They have no power, strength and authority and not only did he do it but he did it <clears throat> he shamed them publicly so he made a mockery of it and i think about the scripture where you all uh, reference the table in the midst of your enemies be good but it's all kind of turmoil around you and it's like it, it, it's amazing on how it's just how it's not just hmm, A regular gift, but it's a gift where God is exalting you and you know and showing this is how it is with my son. You understand what I'm saying? Or you can understand, you can see the difference. You can see the difference between you know what's going on. And I want to go to Colossians 2, 9 and 10. For in him dwelleth all the fullness. Of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So again, it's right here saying, in Jesus, we are made complete. So everything he did, we have. So we take it back down to that Colossus where. He disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. So they already done it. So we have what we're the what head of all principality and power. But it's all through Christ Jesus. It's none of us by ourselves. It's all through Christ Jesus. I'm gonna throw this in here about your power and authority. Power is the ability to do something. Authority is the right to do it. Say that again. Power is the ability to do something, and authority is the right to do it. I can go again with the example of like police, right? They have the power and authority to arrest uh, people who are breaking the law, right? But then on the other hand, you have vigilantes. They might carry a gun and still do the same thing with a person breaking the law, but they missing the authority part. They missing the right to do it because you're gonna go to jail just as well as the person you're trying to arrest. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a process. It's a certain way. It's um, in order to what God has. I'm gonna to go to Romans eight thirty seven. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. When I read the part, we are more than conquerors, because again, this is through Christ Jesus. So we reference the other scriptures that we read. Disarmed and ruling. 
So he's not just a warrior that's in you, but a king. Because you're not the soul, you're not just a soldier who went and disarmed and won the battle. You're also the king that's over and making sure everything stays in order. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we're more than just that's why I like the part where it's more than just conquerors. Because a conqueror could be a general who went out and just won the battles. But to be more than a conqueror, you're actually ruling over the things that you conquer. If you feel me? Okay. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We can put in contact. No matter all day long, we are we, we killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for slaughter. It is in our And yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Well, we are we, we, all in. And yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. That's the victory in it. All this that we go through, we still more than conquer. They done killed us. They done talked about it. They done put us down. They done, they, they were counting us out. <laughs> but we still more than conquer. Yeah. That's a powerful, there's a powerful statement that we didn't cry. How powerful being in him, no matter what they put the end and throw at you, when you're in him, you more than a conquer. Exactly. How he put you, he put you in that place. Like you say, in that in that position to be. Right. Um. Then my next scripture I have First John four and four. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And when, as I was reading this scripture, what I was getting out of this was to overcome them. I was looking at them as spirits. You've overcome them, all the spirits. They can send you astray, you overcome them. Because the one, Jesus, who is in you is greater than the one, the devil, that is in the world. So again, you, all this is referencing the same thing. When Jesus disarmed everything, he's running everything. So no matter what happens, if you stay focused on the truth, the word of God, the power and the authority in your identity, you'll be right with it and you'll be able to handle it. I mean, I won't just say handle it. It's just like you put like the, the sheep to the slaughter. But all the things that come against you, You'll be able to handle it because you know where you are, who you are. Mm -hmm. And in battles, there's a fight. So conquer, there's something, I mean, there, there's something gotta go on right now. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a fight. I mean, there's gotta be something for you to conquer. Mm -hmm. But understand it's already been done. So right now, you just go through the manual. Go through the battle plan. Stick to the battle plan. And go with what the king has told you to do. What he's been doing the whole time he's been ruling. And you're victorious. Like that. Um, then also I want to go to 2 Peter 1, 3, and 4. By his divine power, 
God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. We're going to go to three right quick. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. This is not stuff. <laughs> this is not your car, your house. That's not what you need for living a godly life. Amen. So you can get that out of your head. I mean, the blessings are like a plus. It's not stuff. And the part we have, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share in the divine nature. And the divine nature, I believe that's just him in you. And having access to everything that he has. It's like taking part of his divine nature. And escaping the world's corruption caused by human desires. I thought that promise was the Holy Spirit. Because that's really the only way that you'll be able to escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Because it's hard to fight yourself if it's only you. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to fight yourself if it's only you. And you looking at your own, you looking at your own life, you looking on, you know, because as a scripture where it says things are right in the man's own life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If it's only me and me, I can do something totally messed up, but to me it looks all right. Amen. So that's where the Holy Spirit comes in and you get that holy conviction to change whatever needs to be changed in your life. Because I um just throw that out there with the where the the Holy Spirit comes, it makes things easier. Because in man, there's willpower. Willpower, you got to keep pressing. Willpower, you got to keep fighting and keep it. Every day, oh, I can do it, I'm going to do it, I got 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 it. Mm -hmm. That's what I had in my addiction. Willpower. <laughs> so every day, every day, I had to make that decision and fight with my flesh. And I, again, I just said it's hard to fight with yourself. And over and over again, I gave in. I got tired. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get tired. Just say with boxing. You get tired when you miss. You say more energy when you get something. And instead of swinging and missing, you get tired of it. <laughs> It'll weigh you down. But with the Holy Spirit and with God, it's, it's amazing on how you'll see that it's wrong and all of a sudden it'll just change. Your very fleshly, carnal nature changes to your spiritual nature. Really, your original state. And when the Holy Ghost comes into it, and God does it, He does it all. And that's what the deliverance is. There's nothing else you got to worry about. Either. You know what I mean? Because I don't have to fight anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, I'm good. You know what I mean? It's like, he did what he did. I gave it to him. Yes. I don't want to fight anymore. The battle ain't yours. I don't want to fight anymore. Yes. I want to focus on other things. Yes. You, know, I, I can't, you can't do that. When your mind is over here, you're not giving 100 to something else. When your mind is split, it's 50-50. 
And God wants all of you. So if you give yourself to him, he got all of you, and you're going to clean up whatever stuff trying to go the other way. And it's also because it's easy. It's easy when you give it to him. So when I um now understand that power and authority is yours, but it was given to you. Um, the way I kind of looked at it was like when the U.S. when you go to battle, right? When the U.S. wins. Soldiers take over and they run things and they make something happen and bam, we have the victory. You didn't do nothing. But it's just like you won. When the Olympics go on, you know what I mean? They way over there, we watch them on TV. When they get a go, you gotta go. You understand? So it is it's sweet on how it's given to you. It's like, okay, I'm doing the work. You need the benefits. You have access to everything that I've done already. And I have a long um, scripture, Joshua 10, 24 and 25. Death of the five, five kings in Joshua's day. This is all promised land stuff. They cross over the Jordan and they fighting all the ice. Basically. <coughs> and in this one, they have the five kings. These five different, um, what do you call it? Not really nations, but you know, all the five different nationalities, whatever. Well came together against the Israelites. Through God, they defeated them all. The five kings ran, and they all were with each other. And Joshua said, open, and they ran into a cave. And Joshua said, open the mouth of the cave, and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And they did so, and brought forth those five kings unto them out of the cave. The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarma, the king of Lachish, hmm? Lachish, Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua was called for all the men of Israel. And said unto the captains of the men of war, which went with him, come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said to them, fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all the enemies against whom you fight. And when I got from that, was this what I was saying? It's like, it's done. He put the kings there, and all you had to do was stand there and put your neck on it, and your victory was the same as everything else. You got the same recognition as everything else. Everything that went into play, you have a part of it. And I, I love that about God because it's like, He's given us the ability through Christ Jesus to do everything. 
everything. Everything our brother has done, we can do. Everything. He like he holds me back nothing. You know what I mean? Everything that Jesus came and was doing, he, he said greater works. He didn't say, well, y'all ain't gonna be able to do this, but y'all do this. Everything. And that's 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 like a daddy, you know? <clears throat> it's like a daddy. A daddy gonna give you access to everything in the house. There's timing behind it, but you have access to everything in the house. You understand? Everything is everything basically is yours. Mm -hmm. The car is yours. You can't even go get in the back seat right now <laughs> until you get, you know, until you get supposed to get you, you understand what I mean? <clears throat> and it's so sweet when you have to get in a place to where you learn your identity, who you are, learn what you have in your identity, and learn how to use it in the correct manner. And within that, you can never be defeated because the battle is already won. All you're doing is taking the same footsteps that have already, your, your steps have already been ordered, you already been planned out. Just stay stepping right here. Stay in the spirit, let the Holy Spirit guide you. Once you get into yourself, okay, you might, you might lose something if you step off. You step somewhere you ain't supposed to step, that's you on your own, that's your responsibility then. <laughs> I'm trying to think. <clears throat> And um, another thing about your identity is you must believe. You must believe that is who you are and carry yourself in the way and receive it. You have to receive all these things in the Bible. You can read them all day long. But if you don't receive it, and you say activate it or act in it, it doesn't do any good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do any good. It's, it's easier with the police. It's like a policeman. Okay. You got a badge, you got a gun. But if you leave it at home, <laughs> it's gonna be mighty hard to convince somebody you're a policeman. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, so you gotta keep what you supposed to have, keep it on you, keep it with you, and walk it out. Walk it out. If not, <laughs> it's gonna be hard trying to convince somebody. Just say like with um, the with scripture about the quarreling. That's not what you're supposed to be wearing. So it's gonna be hard to convince somebody you something when you got on something, you know. Man, you believe me? You got on a trench coat for. You know what I mean? Like, why are you here? Wait a minute. I mean, you know? So you got to walk in the way that you're supposed to walk. <clears throat> and only then will your power and authority make a difference. Then I thought about um, Jesus and the demons. He spoke to them. Then they came out. Right? When he first went up there, they stayed in that man. They stayed in it. They didn't go anywhere once we commanded them. So again, that's, we go back to the police man again. He go in the store, somebody robbing the store. Is that man trying to get away? And you don't draw your gun and you just look at him. Nine times out of ten, he's not just going to put his hand. You know, he's not going to just give you his hand and say, lock me up. You don't have to say something. You don't have to do something. All of these things with your identity, with the gifts that are in, with the promises that it holds, there's things you have to do. There's things you have to do, um, I guess, in concert with it. But as far as cleaning yourself up, and learning how to use it. He gave you that already with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gonna teach you how to use it, what to do, what's going on, like a police academy. They're gonna give you everything that you're supposed to do. 
the way that you're supposed to do it, the way you're supposed to do it, the way you're supposed to carry yourself, the way you're supposed to do this, the way you're supposed to do that, it's all in here. But if you don't do it like the man, are you really who you are? If you don't do it like the man, are you really who you are? How can you call to say yourself a Christian if you never do that in the world? Is how it is. <clears throat> and um really let's go over again the um what you get out of your identity is power, authority, responsibility. You learn how to carry yourself to help others, to help others to do what needs to be done in your life, to hold strong and fast to everything. Let's be confident in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Skim through the book. Because if you skim through the book, you just know partially what's in the book. You know little things that's in the book. You're not, you got to get down in the book and read the little bit of ands and these and connect to know what it's all about. You can't just skim it. And a lot of times, I know years, over years, I used to skim in the book. And then over the few, over the last few years or so, I just started getting in the book. You know, now I enjoy getting in the book. You know, I enjoy learning new stuff. I'm not, when I saw when you revealed to me something that revealed to help me to understand what it really means to do what you say for me to to live a life, be. Be who God called to be. Because it's, 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 it's really important that you understand. You, you get the understanding. You just listening to what somebody else is saying. That ain't going to get it. You need to get it from your own understanding. You read the scripture, it said that you have to. Read the scripture said to to commit your faith with your knowledge. Commit the faith with the knowledge. So you have to have faith and knowledge of God. You just can't have one. You just can't have the faith without having the knowledge of God to be able to do it. You have to have knowledge of God to understand who He really was. You got to know who He is. And then you have to, in order for your faith to be activated. Hey man, you got to know. Hey, look, I got to go through some stuff. He, he said that we're gonna have to go through some things in order for in order for us to really understand this walk. We're gonna have to go through some things. The, the, the walk is not gonna be cherries every day. Not gonna be. Cher- He's gonna take us through some things in order for us our faith to be stronger. It's got to be stronger because there's gonna come a time when people gonna be depending on us. They are gonna be calling you. They be calling you. Why? Because he's gonna give you. You said if you're gonna have some responsibilities, there are people out there that's gonna be calling you because God will make them your responsibility. And your responsibility is to know the word and know what to tell them, how to tell them, because God is gonna put them in your path in order to be able to do that. You got to know the word of God. You got to know how to. It's got to be in you to be able to. And the knowledge of God to be able to talk and deal with these people on the on a, on a level that God wants you to deal with. And that's the way you're going to have to continue to grow. It's going to, I and mean, this is this is an every, everyday thing. I don't realize this. This is an everyday thing. This ain't just a, a one week we do this one week and then we lay off. This is something we're going to have to continue to do. 
that I that I we get a true identity. I mean a true identity where we know who we are for sure. Nobody can sway us. You can tell me, Harris, you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing, but I already know who I am. I know you ain't nothing, but you ain't nothing. I know who I am. I know what I used to be, but I know what I am. Now, you can't call me nothing. You can't say nothing about me. I know who I am. Why? Because I've been in the Word. I know what God is doing with me. I know. I know. Yeah, I, do I have frailty? Do I have some weakness? Yeah, I know. But you know what? He already said I already got victory over that. He already told me I got victory over that. Yeah, I got, I'm going to have to go through some things. There's a victory over that because he's going to conquer. It's already been conquered. I just got this old flesh got to get over. He already conquered it already. Yeah, he's already conquered it. I just got to get over. You know, my weak self. The Holy Spirit already conquered. I just got to get over my weak self. So we just got to learn that through Him, it's already done. Through Him, we already healed. Through Him, we already got victory. Through Him, we are we are we are we, we already preaching the gospel. Through Him, we already saved. Through Him, we already saved the people. Him, we're already laying hands on the sick. Through him, we already doing all of that. We just got to walk it out. Like he said, we got to walk it out. We got to walk this word, we got to get this word in a with it's a daily thing. And I'm I'm believing this. I'm believing this. And I'm I'm, I'm living this, doing this. I enjoy it. And I, and I hope we all get to that point. And I hope people that that are out there that that, that that's going to be coming through those doors get. Come in and they get that same spirit that we got. Get that spirit of hey, getting in that word, living that word, eating that word, and then just enjoying that word. Just you know, having a good time and reading the word and living the word. Amen. But so that's where that's how I mean. We didn't get here by accident. We got here by going through something. We got here by going through something. Now we enjoying the fruit. We enjoying that fruit. And that's okay. We we we're gonna help somebody else and, I, and God is with a mighty God. That was a good word. Knowing you know, I can know who you are, you know I can that, that was a good word. I like where you can live with that. Amen. And that's something we can build upon and we can take on into the rest of this week the next week. And something that we can edify the kingdom with. Amen. I hope you all that are watching and listening. I hope you enjoy that word. From the Dean Live Temple of Worship, and until next week, amen. You be blessed in the name of Jesus, amen. This is uh, Pastor Hazard. We sign it out until next week. Glory to